Let's find out everything we need to know when it comes to GitHub and branches. Welcome back, y'all. In this video, let's go over branches and how that applies to our web applications, our software, basically any context when it comes to coding. I do a lot of content on this channel around creating actual software or just leveraging artificial intelligence when coding in this new age. So that's pretty cool. You can check me out there. And one really big reoccurring request, idea, or situation is what the heck is a branch? How do we properly commit and essentially everything we need to know about the software creation process. When I say software, let's just use that as a ubiquitous term here for any type of coding in any context, pushing, committing, everything. This video idea actually came from my school community. You can check it out. Description down below. Hit the link. Let's proceed. In order for me to best showcase this, we're going to go to a real code repo for a real website. And this code right here was on a three hour and 30 minute playlist that showed me creating my own website, which is this one right here. Completely mobile responsive. Everything good to go. Links work. Nice little enlarging when you hover over everything we love in websites. So what is a branch and why do we use it? Let's go and create one. Personally, I like creating a new terminal window when doing these commands, but in theory, you can come down here, click this, and just click terminal right there, and then it'll be exactly where your code is located when pushing these kind of commands. If that didn't make any sense, put it this way, basically, we need to access where this code's located, which is in Web Cafe Land for me. That's just a folder on my computer. Now, for me to access Web Cafe Land, the folder with all my code, the command for me is simply CD Web Cafe Land. If you don't want to deal with that, you don't want to open a new terminal window, that's fine. Just simply go through the process I showed you earlier where it opens up a terminal window within the IDE integrated development environment. That's what this is. That's VS Code, WinSurf, all that. For now, though, we are within the code directory. Once we're here, let's create a separate branch because the first reason we create separate branches is so that we never commit and make changes on our main branch. Our main branch is the code that is currently live within production. When I say production, that means the live website link you see up there and everything that's going on right here. This is live code. Therefore, we know that when it's in production or that live website link, it's not broken. It's good to go. So that's the first reason and first major reason we create branches. So when we make changes here, we know we're not messing with good code. So let's make our branch. We're going to say git branch just to see what we're on. Okay, we're on main. This is going to create one locally. We're going to do git check out B and then we're going to call our branch name. Typically what you'll do is that the branch name is going to be whatever you're changing about the underlying application you have. So let's say we're going to make a change to our footer right here. What I would do is some type of general term. I'll just say footer change and there we go. So now we are in the branch of footer change. This is an exact duplication of main. There is no difference between main code and footer change code right now. They're the exact same. Here's the difference though. I click our IDE, VS Code cursor, click it, it'll change down here. Now we're in footer change. What this means on a service level is this. I go like this. I put a comma here. I say test one, two, three. So we got test one, two, three in footer change. So when we make a differentiation between main and footer change, you're gonna notice a little asterisk here that says, hey, there's something different from the original code locally. What we can do here is now we can push this to our GitHub. As a side note, if you wanna know how to connect local code to the cloud like GitHub. I'll leave a video in the description down below that shows you how to do it in 30 minutes with resources by a Google Doc. That's not the purpose of this video. Git add, git commit. This is when we're changing and adding committing changes to our branch here, right? So we can just say, add a comment. And what you'll notice is gonna do a couple things. So we're gonna git push origin and we're gonna do the branch name, which is footer change. And then we're gonna jump over to GitHub. First thing it's gonna do is it's gonna remove that asterisk because the local code and the cloud code Exact same. Come in over to our GitHub. You will notice it will come in as a PR request. The purpose of this is now we have separated the original main code, everything that was here, and we have that slight differentiation here of that test one, two, three that we added as a comment. Now, typically, what I like to do is we can just pull this in right away, right? Create our little PR request here, great pull request, and this is live. Now we haven't merged to main yet, which I'll describe why we do that and everything about that. But for now, you successfully created a separate branch that currently is a PR within the cloud, pull request. So now here we go. We now know that in footer change, this is going to be a change we make to the footer. That's what we call it, footer change. So let me go through some best practices of when approaching PRs and just branches in general. Well, first off, I'm gonna remove this test one, two, three. Second off, 
let's go to our footer file. So here's 101 of when we just do commits. Like when is an opportunity for a commit? I suggest you do commits when you feel like you're at a safe spot and a lot of work you put towards a file. So what I mean by this is assuming we look at this footer here, let's just say I go crazy here and I'm like, you know what? I don't want any of these columns. I delete all of this, delete, save. I'm like, that's it. I don't want any of these columns. This would probably justify a save slash checkpoint that you would want to commit to your PR because it's so drastically different than the original main code that we had. Because compared to this, the main code still had that. So this would be what we call a commit. So git add dot git commit. And what I suggest you to do, especially early days, if you're like, what the heck do these even mean? What's going on? Why is there three different commands? Put them in a sticky note, have them on your desktop, get ready to go. This though is gonna be our second commit here git commit dash m remove all links in footer so second major tip i can give you here is whatever the commit is give it very much clarity it's like when you play a video game and you have like a checkpoint you know when you're playing skyrim and you're like about to go to winter hall i think it's called and maybe like attack the entire city and you put a little checkpoint in your game like before attacking city because it can get a little crazy same idea here, remove all links to footer or like roll back to this if you need to have the links back, whatever it may be. This is like saving a checkpoint that we can roll back to. We're gonna do git push origin footer name or branch name for the change. So what we're doing here, let's come over here and then you'll notice is that we have two different commits here and here we go. The idea is this though, watch this. We got added comment, that was the first one. We got remove all footer links, that's fine. This right here, is how we're gonna roll back. This is how we roll back to a checkpoint. So I'm gonna show you how to do that because it's actually very valuable. And that's very much why we use branches as well is for this ability to roll back. So let's say I keep going here. I'm like, okay, you know, exploring ways to build, whether it's in the mountains, you know, I'm like, no, nah, not the mountains. Let's say the lakes. And then I hit save again and we do another commit. So then I come over here. I'm like, git add, git commit. Same situation as you'll notice here, the more you add, or the more you do these little pushes, it'll be like very natural. Get push origin for the change. Okay, we're good to go. We keep going, we keep going, we're working and working. And at a certain point, we may get to so many commits and we're like, hold up. I think we went down the wrong path here and this is just no good, which happens. E.g. the application's kind of broken or you just took the footer down a path that you're just like, whoa, I do not like how this looks. What's great is that because we created these little save checkpoints, we can just roll back to one of these. So let's roll back to the checkpoint before I removed all the links in the footer because I think I need some links. So I'm gonna go and copy this. Your next question might be, Corbin, how the heck did you get to this page? Don't worry, come to your repo here, go to pull request, click the underlying PR that we created together, go to commits, and then this is where it's found right here, right above me. Before I show you how to reset hard to a previous checkpoint, there's also another valuable thing you can do if you don't wanna take this route. Simply click the commit. So if I click added comments here, you know it's only gonna show you what you changed very specifically within that commit. But sometimes you may wanna look at the entire code repo up to this point. Actually to see what the code repo was up to that point, it seems like they moved some stuff around here in GitHub. Go back to your pull request here, added comments, commits, and then all we actually have to do is click this little button right here. We can browse the underlying code up to this point, which can be useful in the context that maybe you don't wanna do a full on reset, but you're like, you know what? I remember in my source file, I just kinda of wanna grab the original code found in app.js. Assuming though it's red alert and we're like, we just messed up Corbin. We gotta go all the way back to the beginning and go to our original save point. Here we go. We're gonna come over to our IDE here. Obviously have your terminal window open. In your terminal window, we're gonna do this command. You're gonna grab what you just copied and you're gonna add this. Get reset, dash dash hard, and then whatever you just copy, paste. Then you're gonna hit enter, boom. What you'll notice is that we just got all our links back and we just went back to that checkpoint that we said this is fundamentally very important and why I always encourage this kind of development. As this gives you more free will where you can feel comfortable when you get to a save point to maybe take that risk on what you are coding next. What I mean by this is that in software development, web app development, or whatever kind of development you do, there are gonna be times when you are coding certain things, components or functions or whatever it may be that you might not be 100% confident on. You're gonna take the risk of maybe like really messing with the file to try to get the end value point, And now you have the insurance of being able to roll back to previous commits, which is just fundamentally amazing, honestly. Like I said, it's like playing Skyrim, rolling back to pre-attacking Winter Hall. I think it's Winter Hall. Is it Winter Hall? Okay, it wasn't Winter Hall. It was Winter Hold.
<laughs> Shout out to Skyrim. This was an amazing game growing up. But once you're satisfied and you're good to go and you're like, you know what, Corbin? I like my branch. I'm good to push this all the way. Let me actually do this with you so it's very clear. So to confirm, we have the correct branch here. Okay, we got our links here. We named that from mountains from lake. From the app.js, we did test one, two, three, four. And the command I used uh, in order to assure this clean would happen correctly as before, you might get this a very annoying situation here because we did the force rollback of like, hey, fail to push because, you know, it's fast forwarding. I don't care. So we're going to go ahead and just do git push force origin footer change. This is going to force your local code to be like, okay, I got it. I got it. We're going to go to that very specific branch commit that we did way earlier and clean it up between the cloud and your local. So then what you'll notice is that our commits here go all the way rolled back here to add a comment and clean. It removed all that original commits that we had that may have went down a route that just wasn't good. So from here, it's very simple. Once we get to a point where the branch is good to go, we've tested NPM start, everything looks clean. I'm gonna just leave this in here, honestly. We can go to merge. And to do that, we're gonna go to our pull request here, add a comment. And what merging is doing is we're taking this branch and just merging it to main. Watch this, this will make more sense. Merge pull request, confirm merge. Once we merge, we can actually just delete this branch. Don't worry, if you ever need to reference this specific branch again, we can just restore it, but it's just common practice to just delete the branch. And the only thing different now from the main and footer change, if you remember, is gonna be this one comment in line seven in our app.js. So to confirm that our merge worked correctly and you can now fundamentally understand what it means to merge a branch, if I come back over to my re repo here and I go to my main branch right here, which you'll notice merge pull request for footer change, the only change I should see here is in that app.js. Let's see, there we go. It was successfully merged back into the main code. Now from here, in theory, once we're good to go, I could deploy this to my web app, but as you can probably already expect, there's really no reason to deploy because it's just a comment and only I can see that. No one can actually see that within the application itself. That just about does it. So make sure you leave a like if you felt like you learned something in today's video. And what I always tell my software engineers when developing with branches, think of it like a game checkpoint. Think of it like playing Mario. You hit the little flag, you can always roll back. It's a very, very good practice to have. Also, it allows for the ability for scalability within a workplace environment due to the fact that you can have multiple engineers have separate branches for a specific repo that's a whole different conversation but for now i'll see you in the next video multiple branches footer change main two random videos that's my face i'll see you in the next video